Welcome to the last FinTech Monthly of 2014, and what a year it's been. In this episode, we've got news of IPOs and investment, an expert looks at the autumn statement, and we've gathered a few of our friends together for a special Christmas treat. British fintech startups eToro and Market Invoice both ended the year in style by closing large investment rounds. eToro netted a cool $27 million. The startup is a social network for investors that lets users see and copy other people's trades. Market Invoice raised almost $8 million, with the alternative finance market set to explode in 2015. To borrow a phrase from Frank Sinatra, it's been a very good year for fintech, especially as it all ended in Lending Club's IPO. Such a good year, in fact, that there's a special report on fintech in Tech City News' latest print magazine. Michael Tresco of Axel Partners takes us through why it's been such a revolutionary year. The reason that, that London is becoming so influential in the fintech scene is really the focus of all participants in the ecosystem uh, on, on the area, right? So you have the government backing and, and focus, and you have Finovate Finance, and you have, no, you have peer-to-peer -peer lending being included as part of ISIS potentially, which is you know, a great thing for the industry. On the flip side, you have uh, accelerators starting up in London specifically focused on, on fintech, and you have an increased focus of the investor community, which then again breeds uh, more entrepreneurs and more attention and uh, people coming to London. To get your hands on the magazine, click subscribe at the link below. On the 3rd of December, George Osborne delivered the autumn statement. Within it was the announcement of an investment fund for tech startups and a number of other pro fintech announcements. Our friend Richard Gould from Rag Lawrence Graham & Co is here to tell us more. The autumn statement this year was good for fintech in London specifically. I think the alternative finance segment in particular is really going to benefit. There's going to be more money going into alternative finance because more bad debt relief is available. But also, I think a pretty bold move from the government is to make sure that the banks open up all of their data. If they're not lending to companies, then they've got to pass the data on those companies over to the peer-to-peer -peer lending platforms. That is quite bold. And also, I think payments is going to benefit as well. If the new payments regulator actually does open up access to these companies, then that will level the playing field. For more from Richard, check out his regular posts on Tech City News. Before we leave you, in the spirit of festive fun and frivolity, we've brought a few of our friends together for a special Christmas surprise. It was the night before Christmas, and all through London town, every creature was stirring. And please note this down, that the word on the street is, don't take it from me, that 2014 was the year for financial technology. So as you snuggle neath the sheets and fill up your stockings, let us take you on a journey, both delightful and shocking, the year in FinTech. 2014, the best year that fintech has ever seen. The movers and shakers were strutting their stuff. And if Apple's payment service wasn't enough, PayPal and eBay split and now tread a separate course. 13 years together, a fintech divorce. When you're rushing through the shops amongst the huffing and puffing in search of a fairy for the tree or a turkey for stuffing, your homeward journey will restore a calm attitude as contactless payments are now active on the tube. As the dinner table becomes laden with crackers and candles and condiments, fintech is now on the menu in the Houses of Parliament. With the launch of Innovate Finance in August this year, fintech's voice is now in the government's ear. Before you fill your lungs for a carol or a cheery Christmas song, remember Barclays and Startup Bootcamp have now entered the throng. Joining Level 39 will soon turn two years old. Startups take heed, FinTech favours the bold. Like the wise men who brought gifts after following yonder star, or the customary fiver in their card from your grandma, TransferWise Funding Circle and Nutmeg received the gift of investment. And as fintech keeps growing, it could prove money well spent. Bitcoin is a Christmas present that won't have you yawning, especially as you don't know what it will be worth in the morning. But it might just change how the world uses money, and here are the facts. It's made investors get rich and the Silk Road collapse. So there you have it, the year in fintech wrapped up in a poem. So go forth and enjoy the presents caroling, turkey and snowing, safe in the knowledge that fintech has scaled new heights. Happy Christmas to you all and to all a good night.